This is a lot of pieces for the Pook Maxi build. This right here will bring the bike, um, other than the pieces you saw in the last video, this is going to bring the bike to about like 90% complete. So this is a lot of pieces to the puzzle right here. We got a whole page of parts right here in this box. Oh man, we got some serious packaging going on here. This is going to get a mess. Mix pieces to the puzzle, but triple treat. Oh man, this is what I really needed. I already know what that one is. Everything's boxed up. We're going to we're gonna have to hit the round two of unboxing here. Fork set in here. I think there's one piece that we can see that I really want to look at. And boy. Oh man. We got the five stars, baby. Disc front hub. Fork legs. I don't know what's going on here. Oh yeah. Some boys are going to be upset about this one, but here we got our pedal delete. Pretty much just a flat bar with uh, little foot pegs, if you will. So, but uh, I guess it's not even a moped anymore. I, is it, now is it just a scooter? We don't even got pedals anymore. And what do we got in here? Also, we're going all out with the front, as you saw. So we had to uh, beef up the rear as well. So we got some rear shocks as well in here. Other rear shock. Look at this thing. Full front setup for the Pook. Full EBR front suspension for the Pook. And it looks like we got a little bit of a headlight mount situation going on in here. But, but these are the disc legs and hopefully, well not hopefully, it definitely will give us a lot beefier suspension up front than these tiny little arms that are just blown out too. Mine are so bad in the front. So we're going to beef up that whole front end of that thing. We're going to be looking real good up there. And then like I said, you already know, we had to do the rear as well. So we got shocks for the rear as well. So, and actually... With the way I'm doing this, I'm actually only using the top piece and the legs from here. I won't be using the actual stem, the triple tree, because we got one right here. And this is supposed to be one that's a conversion to be able to use the Tomos sealed headset. So it's a way better headset than your normal headset that you would find on your Pook. And uh, this is a tapered one. I don't really know if it's actually tapered or because that's just, you know, what it's named. But these hold 30 mil forks. These are 30 mil fork legs, so that with that, should be some good action going on there, boys. All right, so I was messing with the feeler gauge on this, and it looks like this is like a 25 mil headset tube. This is like a 26-ish, so I um, don't know if that one millimeter is going to matter up here on the top of the triple tree, but I'm assuming that one millimeter is literally just for the headset conversion for the Tomos headset to be able to fit these uh, bearing cups and bearings and everything like that. So. Um, it's got me curious though because at first I, everything about these looks identical even to the point where the bottom um, has the same serial number but I'm assuming it's literally just this tube that's the difference. These are wheel bearing seals for the mag wheel. I had to think about it. So we got our uh, five star mag wheels. Like I said we got the disc front hub so we had to get some bearings for that front hub along with we also got a 12 mil axle. Had to get that. Went ahead and grabbed a new petcock while we were in there because why not? We're already going on everything else. Uh, hardware for the disc front wheel conversion for the hub. And then we had to go with the new bottom case bolts, Allen heads, to get rid of those flat heads that are on the bottom of these motors just because, what a pain. So, went with some Allen head bolt kit. And we still got more to unbox here, boys. We're still just getting started. But, funny enough, if you're watching this right now, you would have already seen this because in order to finish the first video on the Pook, I had to wait for these to come in the mail, so kind of defeats the surprise right now. Of course, I just want to give a shout out to Treatland and support them by giving me a discount on these uh, beautiful parts we got here. Good old Treatland, one of your uh, number one moped stores, of course. Pretty much the only one you're going to hear about when you start actually looking for parts for these because they have everything. But good old Treatland, thank you again, and uh, thanks for helping a lot with the, the Pook Maxi build. That's right, you see it here boys, we got straight cut gears for the E50 engine. So, like I said, if you watched the first video, you would have already known this because we had to split the cases and put these in. And uh, the, the videos are overlapping right now because it's just the way it happens. YouTube life, boys. Little uh, time machine action right here. So, this should be the other part of 
the straight gears. All right, not sealed bearing, but it is a needle style bearing, like a tapered bearing. I guess that's where the taper term comes in right there with the bearing itself. Oh my butter. Dude, the things that do bar spins. Yeah, obviously it does not work on this one. All right, so it's literally one millimeter difference. That's insane. But wow, we're gonna have a nice pretty little headset needle bearing action going on in there, boys. It's time today that we really start taking apart the Pook 50. Uh, we got a bunch of parts in, as you saw. Now it's time to get this thing down to a bare frame because we're gonna be changing the forks, the headset, swing up. We're literally taking the whole thing down to a bare frame. We're also gonna clean the gas tank while we're in there because the glass, the gas tank looks like it has a little bit of rust. Uh, oh no. Oh, well, that's not good. We're completely changing this uh, antique style bike here, I guess you'd say. This thing's an oldie, boys. So, feels some type of way getting rid of all these stock parts. So we gotta keep everything just in case, you never know. What if we wanna bring this bad boy back to stock? We got the frame completely stripped, and uh, now it's time to take some of this vinegar. We're gonna pour it in the gas tank and clean out the gas tank in this thing. Because if you saw inside the gas tank, it's so much worse than I thought. I looked in it originally, but after like pouring the gas forward and dumping out what was in it, it brought all this like surface rust and like putty stuff to the very front. So I got seven screws two, three, four, five, six, seven that we're gonna throw in the tank with all the vinegar. Count how many you do, that way you know how many you're taking out when you go to fish for them. Screws are easiest because you can use a magnet to pull them out. Look in there. Look how bad that is, boys. So we're going to try to get all that out. Oh man, oh, terrible pour. Break all that up. Probably hard to see in there now, but there was just chunks of rust when we first looked in there. It's getting a little flash rust right now, so I gotta hurry up. Try to get some oil and some gas in here, but I keep getting flakes coming out. I almost want to do another run of vinegar, but you can tell almost all the rust is actually gone off the inside, except for like this little corner in there. That's so much built up, but I'm gonna run some gas through it now. All right, for no reason here, I'm dying to see what the wheels look like with the tire on. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop one of the new tubes in, throw one of these tires on, and get a good look at one of these, uh, what these things look like. Oh boys, it looks so good. Got the mag wheel, got the, got the freshy tire on there, freshy tube. It's so much easier putting these on. These are like a bike tire compared to the scooter wheels that we're always doing. These thick ass tires are such a pain to put on. But uh, through that tire on with these, still got it soaking in the white vinegar. I've just been sloshing it around every like 20 minutes or so. And uh, we're getting that thing cleaned out eventually. So making moves in the right way. Got one tire on, got a new tube, got the old tire. We're using an old tire for the rear. Should've just got a new one, but it saved us like 50 bucks. And uh, this tire is pretty new that was on it already, so just gotta clean it up. But uh, throw this bad boy on, then we'll have the wheels pretty much ready to go. All we have to do is bolt in the hubs, press the bearings in the hubs, etc., etc. So, one thing done. Always easier to put a little bit of air in the tube too, just helps from pinching it when you're actually putting the tube in, so. Put like two or three PSI in there just to gain form and then throw the wheel on. Changed my mind about running this tire because when I went to put it on, I noticed that part of like the actual beat of the tire is like pulling through and it's really sharp in some spots. So like I feel like this thing wouldn't last that long. As you see is right here. This one actually has the metal wire sticking out and it was just about to shank my inner tube. So I would have went right through a tube putting this thing on, but it's all deformed, so I'm just gonna go buy a new tire and just wait. No reason to ruin it. All right, here we got our rim, tire, tube, everything on on this one. Then we got our, uh, I guess you'd say our center rim, no hub. Here we got our hubs, Mike Thomas hub for this. It's actually for a disc brake. We're not even gonna be running a front brake as of right now, mostly because this thing's gonna be kind of a wheelie bike and we probably won't even end up really putting a front brake on. Most of the centers on these actually don't. 
because uh, it's, they're just so light anyway. But I got the five star hub anyways because it won't be hard to put a front brake on if I really wanted to, having everything pretty much set up for it. So we're just not gonna be running basically the rotor or the caliper in the front, but we have our actual wheel bearings here that are gonna be pressed into this hub and then we're gonna find the right size spacer with this uh, conversion kit, I guess you would call it, or 12 mil axle kit from uh, Treatland. So it comes with all the spacers you might need for any type of hub. And then, of course, we got the bolts to go along with the hub assembly itself. So, first things first, um, I'm gonna figure out which spacer I'm gonna be using, then press the bearing in. You can see the bearings have a little groove there. I'll press one bearing in and then get an idea of where the spacer sits and everything like that. Make sure we got the right spacers. Throw it all together, boys. This is how we'll do this. Do a little bit of grease in there. Should be Gucci. All right, it looks like the larger spacer in the pack is gonna do us right, so now we're gonna press in the other bearing. We'll have a hub built in. All right, so we got the front wheel put all together with the bearings pressed into the hub. So that's how we're looking. This is where the rotor would actually bolt onto, uh, but we're not gonna be running the rotor right now. We got these studs out the back. Kind of looks crazy, but it actually, the studs are almost flush with them, so they would literally be that long poking out if I had nuts on it, so. It is what it is. I'm glad it's a black hub though because it looks all dialed in the front. So now we got both our wheels pretty much ready to go. Wait till my rear disc setup comes in for this. I can't wait to show you guys that. And uh, we're getting that custom built right now. So now we're going to have to swap over this part of the forks. All right, I noticed this one's a little taller too. So I hope that doesn't make too big of a difference on where it sits. I don't know. Maybe we'll just have to run a spacer up top. But I marked it anyways where the other one was just to get an idea of where it was at before I pulled the forks out. So now I'm just gonna swap to the new one, throw it in, boys. All right, new bottom part of the triple tree is in. No reason to put this on yet because we're gonna have to put this through the frame anyways, so kind of set that on there for now. And then we have our whole headset, which we're gonna actually go ahead and pop out the frame um, cups for the original headset because we got some Tomos ones right here to put in. In order to pop these uh, headset, uh, I guess it doesn't really matter if we scratch the fenders, we're gonna be cutting that part off. But uh, in order to get this headset out in, oh, that was insanely easy. We gotta pop out these, uh, I guess, uh, cups, if you will. Just like that, boys. One has a cutout. So I'm assuming that's for the bottom one. That makes sense. So that'd be for the bottom one. All right, just made this contraption. I just couldn't fit it in my press right. So put a 19 mil socket on the bottom, found a long bolt running through. Got a big socket that fits like perfectly flush up here. Now I just gotta tighten them and it should pull them right together. We did it, boys. I was just starting to pull through on this little washer I had to make, but that worked, boys. Perfect. Doesn't really come with instructions, but I think we got it set up right. I noticed that one had a little cutout in it, so I'm assuming that's exactly where it went. But we got our headset uh, pressed in perfectly, and now we can throw these in. So I'm gonna throw a little bit of grease. God damn, that looks good. Look at that thing. That is so beefy. I just need to put the bolts in on here. The nuts are neat. Tighten the forks on. Don't know what I'm about to do about a headlight setup yet. Boys, here's how we're looking on the Pook. It's so much heavier in the front. Obviously, this is not the right axle, so the axle kit I bought definitely does not work with the forks I bought. It's not wide enough whatsoever. It doesn't go all the way through. So, I have a temporary axle in there, but it's a 10 mil, so it's not the right size and it's just sloppy with the washers. I literally put it in there just to see what the black rim looks like pretty much, but sitting this bike up, looking at this thing, it looks sick, dude. I figured at this point, we kind of have to see what it looks like with the bars on. We're already this far, so gonna pop this clamp off, throw the bars on, throw the bar pad on, get a proper look at how this front end's gonna look. This is a good look at what we're gonna be looking like, boys. Threw the handlebars on, the bar pad, and the frame brace. So, if you know, these frames are kind of this like stamped metal and uh, frame brace helps a lot, especially if I'm going to be stunting on this thing. And now that this front end's even heavier, just made the center of this bike even weaker because now we got it beefed up everywhere else. But 
I've got the swing arm set in there because I still have to do my rear disc and we're going to have to mess with the swing arm a bunch. But just imagining this with everything all black, this thing's going to look so good with all these black accents. The silver looks badass. This thing is going to be sweet, bro. Alright boys, this is where we're going to end this video. As you see, we got her rolling. We got a lot of our disc rear setup going on in here, but I don't want to show you that until we get the next video done. So you guys will have to stay tuned to see how we do this full rear disc setup, this new hub we got in here, and everything like that. So make sure you subscribe because you don't want to miss that, and you want to see when we put that thing on. Because that rear hub and disc setup is going to be a game changer on this thing. I just can't wait to ride this thing. So at this point, we're almost there, boys. We got this thing as a rolling moped right now. So I am so stoked. Obviously, tires rubbing. You can hear it in the back. We got to offset the spacers a little bit in the swing arm. Get that whole situation handled. But that's going to do it for this one, boys. We got the whole moped rebuilt. We didn't really focus on the motor in this video. You guys got to stay tuned for that as well. But we got the moped pretty much ready to go. So make sure you like, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. I can't wait to ride this thing. And that's going to do it. I'll see you guys in the next one.